welcome back to the Target Transfers podcast, the number one hair printing podcast in the world. Today, Andy and I are joining you solo. No guests today. Uh, it's just us. We're going to be talking all about Christmas for heat printers, how to maximize sales, uh, really grow your business and why you need to be starting now. It is the 25th of August yeah. upon recording. Um, so why you need to get started August, September time uh, for heat printers at Christmas. We've got some questions that a few of you have sent us uh, around heat printing at Christmas. Uh, so we're going to go through those. We're going to also cover a rough timeline um, of which months you should be doing what. So planning, ordering, printing, marketing, etc. Um, and then, yeah, anything else that comes up in the meantime? Yeah, it's a really good opportunity at Christmas because... All of your customers will want to have Christmas products. If you're a brand, it's a great opportunity to have some different opportunities um, to market towards your customers. Um, and anyone that's a part of our um, newsletter, you'd already been had first look at some tips and tricks that we're going to cover today. So if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, I encourage you to do that because we do have a special um, business planning uh, track on there that would be a really great opportunity for all of you to get involved with. Yeah. So to start with, just to give everyone a bit of context, should we start with the timeline? Mm -hmm. If you are on our mailing list, you would have seen this already. It came out in the initial email that we sent regarding Christmas, which everyone who received the email clicked yes and no one clicked no to hearing about Christmas at this time of year, which is fantastic. It means everyone's already in the right mindset, um, which is great. So we'll start with August we're in now is when you start talking about it. It's exactly why we're doing a podcast on it for you today. September is when your planning commences. So getting your ideas together, thinking about what products you want to create, what designs, what transfers, etc. cetera. Um, early October, end of September, early October is when you'll be promoting your products. So whether or not you've actually produced them doesn't matter. Um, we've seen quite a few customers mock up in previous years their designs um, so you don't necessarily have to waste money or garments printing products and then them not being popular with your customers you can just mock them up on photoshop on canva and um, put them out and see what's popular and then you only need to buy your order uh, what you need for your best sellers essentially um, we can dive into that in a bit more detail later in the episode um, Mid-October, we've got manufacturer products. So once you know what's going to be popular and what your customers want, um, you can get started printing those. And then the second they started printing, you can get selling. So throughout all of October and November, it's when customers will be buying your products. You might get a few sales beginning of December, but I think by that point, maybe sort of the first week or two, is sort of your last chance to make sales. Yeah, right? I think so. I think partly because I think the Christmas window it's kind of well into November at this point. A lot of people put their trees up in November. They really start to think about it. Or if it's... Uh, people love Christmas. Yeah, if it's something <laughs> they're buying for a present, a lot of people like to get prepared early and buy well ahead of the, well ahead of time so they can get to that point. Or, do you do that? Uh, do you buy your presents two months in advance, Andy? No, I don't know. But oh, good. Okay, I know, lot, do I. <laughs> I know lots of people do. Someone, uh, somebody works here who's got some small kids are saying that she'd done all of her Christmas shopping already. Really? Really, yeah. Who are we talking about? You have to tell me afterwards. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so some people would like to be really advanced planning. I, I can understand why. I, I can. I'm terrible with Christmas shopping. I leave it till yeah. end of November and then panic. Yeah, I've got too many birthdays to buy for in November, so I can't really think about it until after. Oh, that's but. a good excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's not what customers are going to be saying. No, so They like to get things wrapped up. And I guess, you know, if you buy, say, for instance, it's Christmas jumper, people want to make the most out of wearing that jumper. They don't want to just wear it for one day. They want to be able to wear it for like every three days or something in the build up to Christmas, really make the most of it and show it off. Yeah. I remember last year we made Christmas jumpers with vinyl and um, I wore mine for five weeks, I think, from the end of November right through till we stopped working for the Christmas holiday. So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend getting them in and sold so that people can make the most of them yeah especially if you're making a high quality one as well you might as well make yeah, the most yeah, of it yeah yeah and a lot of people have more than one now as well have mm -hmm. a couple of jumpers a couple of tops yeah and the great thing is that with our vinyl or our transfers is that those products will you know if, there's no reason they couldn't last say 10 years because mm -hmm. if you're just wearing say five times a year for one month then you vacuum pack it away in january so yeah, that's the, true. And the, the jumper's going to last, the transfer will last, so you can yeah, get like yeah. a, a lot of life out of them that way. 
Yeah, I think that's the best thing when you get your favourite one as well. We've all got our favourite Christmas jumpers and then when they start to sort of fade or go a bit naff, mm. it's a really sad day when you have to throw them out. So that's not yeah. something you need to worry about when you're no. doing it with our transfers. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add on the timeline front? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify on the uh, August part about start talking about Christmas. This is quite an important thing. So obviously we could help you with a two-day turnaround on transfer. So it's easy to get stuff out but you don't yeah. you don't want to wait to the last minute because it'll be stressful you might as well get uh planning and even if that talking about christmas is purely internally amongst staff or amongst the rest of the sort of mm. your team it's worth having that conversation nice and early because you want to be prepared you want to have it built into your process so that if you've got other work coming bigger orders for maybe looking ahead to january february you're not going to create a bit of a log jam of work and extra stress for people so it's really worth getting the talking going, getting those designs locked in. So it's just a case of, okay, well, I've got build up enough orders, I'll order my transfers and I'll print and I'll send them out so that you're well ahead, well prepared and well ahead of time that way. Yeah. No, it's a really good, uh, really good tip. Yeah. And, and then planning is, it's obviously what I mean by that is you need to have a marketing plan. You need to be prepared so that the first day, depending on what type of product or brand you are, the first day available, you can be like, okay, yep, I'm going to talk about Christmas now it's, it's acceptable. Or it's a case of actually if you're providing fulfillment for companies, then you should be talking to them in August because then they're going to be talking to their customers in October. So that you need to so there's a kind of a chain of command with the with the conversation. So they're prepared, then you're prepared and everyone wins that way. That's the thing. Everyone always well, not everyone always says, but a lot of people always either will sort of say when we speak to them or they'll comment on things we post and and they'll say, Oh, it's too soon to be talking about it. But if you're in this industry, it's not because you need to be ahead of the game when it comes to stuff like this, because it might be too soon for I don't know, like they show, they've got Halloween stuff in the shops already and you think, okay, yeah, maybe that's a bit soon, but it, the people that are planning that Halloween stuff might have been thinking about it since February. It's not, it's the same sort of thing. Yes, for consumers, talking about it in August might be a big deal, but you're not going to start pitching and selling until end of October, November. So yeah. when you hit that point, you want to be prepared for that. There's no point hitting the, oh, I want to sell Christmas jumpers now. Oh, I haven't thought about it and I've missed the boat and I now can't profit on this year's Christmas sales. Yeah, exactly. And you need to prototype your designs, perhaps get some feedback from your customers, see what they think, go back, to start again. So you really need to That's kind of... That's a big one. It is. Yeah, you need to really make sure you get those designs right so you don't make that mistake in November. You've got all, all winners yeah. at that point. I didn't really realise how long prototyping takes as well. Well, not how long it takes because with Ultracolor Max, it's you can test and it's two days and etc. but the process of designing and sizing stuff before you even get to the transfer stage when I was doing the podcast collection with our studio it took us about two three weeks in between doing everything else so that's probably a bit longer than if you're doing it on your own business like full time um but yeah it took a lot longer than I thought to prototype and sample and actually get them in my hands and go okay I like this I don't like this let's change that and then you've got to go through it all again if there's changes you want to make so and that's true of probably even more true of Christmas because it's something that obviously you're not going to be in the mindset in July and August, but you have to be in the mindset. But it means that those cogs will take a lot longer to turn. Mm -hmm. So that come November, you're firing on all cylinders and you've yeah. already made the find out the mistakes. We need to start listening to Christmas music in the office to get us in the mindset. I'm not sure everyone else would be very happy with that, but I did actually do that last year when I was doing our Christmas campaign. Okay. I had Christmas music yeah. in, on my headphones just to sort of get me in the mood. I don't know whether it worked or not, but worth a try. Um, I feel like we've kind of answered the first question. So it was, why should I start thinking about Christmas now? It's only August. Well, that's... If you want to be successful, that's you, yeah. there's no choice, really. That's, that's the main thing. Yeah, you're going to miss the boat if you don't start talking about it now, as we've already covered. Um, I want to get into this one because there's so many things that you can heat print for Christmas. Uh, so somebody has asked what sort of products do you suggest heat printers produce around Christmas time? And because there are just so many, like you've got your standard, like we were just talking about jumpers, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, you could do sweat matching sweat sets, pajamas, the, the personalized ones, the matching family sets, yeah. um, wash bags, uh, Bags, tote bags, jumpers, scarves, there's so many things. Yeah, the, the, the list is pretty endless in that case. I mean, 
I'd say the main thing really is to obviously there's a long list there, but don't try and do everything unless it's already part no, of your, pick your main, product yeah. mix already. So be sensible about what you pick. Pick products that you know you can decorate on or you know you have ideas for so you can be successful because you don't want to have 20, 30 products you're introducing and having to do five colours of each and five different sizes of each one and it will get very overwhelming and you could end up with a lot of stock in January that you don't need until December next year. Yeah, well, I suppose it depends on the size of your business as well. If you're a one-man band with your heat press as a side hustle, the product range that you offer will be slightly less than if you were had five employees and five heat presses and, you know, because you could get through more stock, but it yeah. all comes down to what you can handle volume-wise and marketing-wise as well. Like, not everyone's going to order all of the colours. No, and it's also making sure that it fits within your brand identity and your product offering. So also any, one, anyone yeah. can offer Christmas stuff, but it's still got to be authentic to what you're talking about. Obviously, if you're fulfillment, then you can just print whatever your customer asks you to. But if you're doing it from a brand perspective, it's got to still kind of be in line with what your customers expect from you or what's true to your identity so that you feel comfortable yeah. promoting it as well. Yeah, you couldn't focus solely on jumpers and T-shirts and then introduce gymwear to the mix because your customers probably won't buy it because they're not used to you selling that like that's not what they're accustomed to when yeah. it comes to seeing like your marketing on their social feeds and things like that i saw quite a few good gym tops last year yeah like the like the slogans and things like that i think that would be quite a fun one if you're doing sort of sportswear and stuff the personalized um christmas like funny slogans were good last year i would say the main thing as well is to is purely to take advantage of us because there's lots of different products that we can, solutions that we can mm. offer now. So um, we did a live event uh, this afternoon about school badges and because one of the main things with school badges is that now there's, with ultra colour, something that wasn't there two years ago, you can do school badges and not have to worry about embroidering everything or printing, cutting everything. The same is true at Christmas. Christmas designs are, tend to be very detailed. Um, and if you go back and watch our webinar that we did with Dane from Great Dane Graphics this time last year he did a very complicated design ordinarily you wouldn't want to weed that but really you wouldn't touch that with vinyl no, but with way really, too many layers but Christmas designs tend to even if it's just like an antlers on a reindeer or snowflakes or something there's lots of cavities there's lots of bits of detail and you don't want to be weeding that yeah, yeah. but you also want to get so all those colors those gradients into the design so it looks amazing um so a lot of people didn't touch Christmas stuff until last year or the year before and now they're like okay now this year that the ones that got involved before are well prepared um, but there's solutions for that i mean like for instance last year as well we introduced a custom uh, shimmer ink range so mm -hmm. this is stuff that we we pre-mixed the colors and added shimmer to them so these are, we had te there's 10 bespoke colors and by the time this podcast come out there will be this year's range will be available on custom.targettransfers.com but basically it means you've got a competitive advantage against people who are not buying their product from us because they no one else in the UK can offer this range of bespoke, specially mixed uh, shimmer inks. That well, you they don't use. exist anywhere else. They don't exist anywhere. We had to uh, develop technology ourselves to create this option for you. So it means that everyone that buys from us is already well ahead of their customers because that finish is above and beyond anything you can get anywhere else, even versus our own vinyl or versus anything else yeah it's, um, the, um, really great option shimmer and metallics look amazing in january through november but for christmas products in particular the ones we had last year like the tree green and even like the red it had like a, a subtle shimmer to it but it just makes things pop that bit more if you're not doing like bright bold block prints and it's just more of a subtle color having that shimmer to it increases the perceived value of the product before the customers even touched it like just from how it looks yeah especially as well if you anywhere you might go at christmas a bit of a restaurant a friend's house there's lights everywhere mm. so it's going to bounce off those that shimmering and the pigment that we put into the design everywhere you go and look yeah. fantastic that way and it's a great marketing tool as well for uh, anyone that's struggling for ideas on that side of things like having something unique like that about your product it's not just a christmas jumper you can hone in on the fact that you've got those specially mixed um inks or shimmer colors you can show them off they look great if you put like a flash behind them with a photo those kind of things yeah. um to really sort of sell the usps of your products for this year as well yeah so take advantage of these options we've built out for you because 
it gives you a real edge over all your competitors. Yeah. Would you use our, we've got obviously the neon inks as well. Would you use them at Christmas, depending on what the design is, more contemporary maybe? Yeah, I think you could use the neon inks because it kind of stands out for people, especially for if you have customers that like Christmas but don't like Christmas designs. Mm. It gives you an option yeah, to yeah, kind yeah. of add a bit of an edge to something that's still it's still going to have, say, for instance, a jumper or a T-shirt that's still going to stand out and look amazing, but without having to be kind of atypical Christmas and have to be uh, Kelly green and signal red. They might want yeah fluorescent orange and fluorescent green. Rudolph or, red, Andy. Rudolph red. It's not called signal red. It's called Rudolph red. <laughs> Um, but as well, yeah. we can always Pantone match as well. So I think last year there was a real trend for sort of like uh, pinks and blues around Christmas that are kind of perhaps a bit more Palm Springs inspired, but mm. um, not necessarily something that's available as a vinyl always. But we can just, you could view, say, use our one to five color screen option and just say, these are the colors I want, or put them into when you're designing your um, designs for ultra color, use those colors. We can easily make those colours look amazing with a transfer. Yeah. No, it's a good option. And to add as well, the metallics, the neons, the shimmers, they are all free and available on EasyView. So when you're ordering your transfers, all you have to do is just click the ink selection colour box in the corner um, and search for shimmer, neon, whatever you're looking for, and just pick the colour and they'll go in free of charge, which is, is a, yeah another exclusive you get from yeah. shopping with Target Transfers. Um, the next question is, what's the best way to make a profit at Christmas time? I mean, as always, it's definitely using the Lean Logo formula to create mm. gang sheets. So for no, anyone that's never ordered a transfer before, um, go to custom.targettransfers.com. On the navigation bar, you've got the Lean Logo formula. But basically, it means we have an A3 transfer layout, put as many transfers as you can on that within a sensible reason. Because that way, the more transfers you get on that, cheaper your transfers are going to be so that way you can make a much bigger profit that way yeah and make sure you can cut them out yeah. it's the biggest issue people have with gang sheets they gang them up so closely that they then can't cut round them when the gang sheets arrive uh so yeah and with transfers there's no weeding so that's obviously that's a big very one. true yeah uh, so that's a great option um i would also say that actually if anyone is doing personalization which we see a lot of at christmas we have a lot of customers do where you might put andy or molly on a stocking or a jumper mm. but you don't want you don't want to have to order a minimum of 10 then that way but you might also have them different colors they might be christmas inspired colors they might have a christmas background to it yeah it means that normally you're like okay can i even find a vinyl that color yeah or how can i even do this but now with ultra color max where you just order one giant sheet these are customers that i've been speaking to that come in and talking to me about christmas products so actually you could probably get 60 70 sets of initials onto one sheet of ultra color max so 29 pounds but you got 70 transfers on there you're looking mm. at sort of 30p per item to do it personalized and it can be it could be 70 different colors so that's a real great way and we could get them back to you in two days so again make sure you lay it out sensibly but that's a real chance to make some really great profit because there's no way that you could um cut and weed all of those trans all those if it was done in vinyl by yourself and do it for 30p if you're paying yourself properly so yeah that's a great way to and also, it means you don't waste material. So with in previous years, before we introduced Ultra Color Max and our minimum order was 10, ten, 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 10 is still a low number when it comes to ordering heat transfers in yeah. the UK. Um, obviously, that is now one. But when it was 10, even though it was still a low number, it was still quite a lot for people that were doing personalization because you would either have things left over and it would be a waste of money, and it's which we completely understood, hence Ultra Color Max came into yeah. play um but just in general with ultra color max now you don't waste product because you can order what you need as and when you need it on a two-day turnaround and you're not left over you're not left with um any sort of transfers they're going to go in the bin essentially so that's cutting sort of your profits straight yeah. away with that or it, and another another option that you can always do because all of our all of our sports film which is our standard flex vinyl is all color matched and you can get all the color profiles on the custom website too. Um, so it means that some of our customers might do, which we've seen a lot of, is they might have a sort of broader Christmas design where mm. it's Santa stop here for 
and then insert yeah. name. So what they would do is they get the tran- most of it printed as a transfer, and then they leave a gap to vinyl the name afterwards. So that's another option for you as well. So you can kind of cut down the cutting and weeding part by half by getting kind of the broader transfer done and maybe have five designs of that. Yeah. And then you just cut the weed, cut and weed the name in at the end, um, doing capital so there's less work to do perhaps as well. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, because a lot of people still do like using vinyl. Like, it is quite satisfying. And I suppose you could do both. Like, if you've got mm-hmm. a specific vinyl, you could colour match it with the transfer. And if you get sick of doing vinyl, you suddenly run out of time or things like that, you could switch to max last minute if you needed to yeah. as well. Yeah, mix and match. Yeah. Um, this is a good one, actually, on marketing around Christmas. How should I market my Christmas products when there's so many other businesses doing the same? This is a really good point because especially at Christmas, the marketing side of things does become very oversaturated. Like Mm -hmm. everyone's doing it. There's 10 times more posts, ads, products that are available and everyone's searching for the kind of the same thing. Like you say, personalized stockings, T-shirts, jumpers. Any recommendations for people that want to really hone in? I mean, I'd I'd focus on your, your, your main customer base first and foremost. But even with that, I've noticed even with sort of Target's Instagram over Christmas, you sh- we struggle to reach our audience because there's so much more content out there. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, we've we've banged the drum on this quite a bit about having your own database over the last over the season. But that's really important is that if you do have your own customer database is leveraging that first, because if you're a brand, obviously you're going to be have brought into you as a brand and they'll want to support you. Yeah. And if you've got a product, they're going to be more like to be inclined to interact with you. Uh, likewise, if you're fulfillment, if you're already having those conversations with your customers, ultimately, it's your customer's customer that has to do the marketing of their of that product anyway. So I guess it's anything you can do to encourage them to help them present their product would be a good way to do it. And that's why things like the shimmer inks, where you can put something out there that's different and new, and it's going to be eye catching, stop people in their tracks, mm-hmm. is a great way to do that. Um, but yeah, leveraging your existing audience and just I guess just being authentic about it as well is it. So if you if you really don't want to do Christmas, it's fine. Obviously, there's a opportunity, a big opportunity, but you should still do it in an authentic manner because if it's not authentic and it's not yes. well done, people are not going to be interested anyway. So I would say um, it's just storytell about what you're trying to do, mm. and those people that are already bought into you will buy in, and then if they're engaging with the product and the offering you've got, it will start to spread organically across most social platforms anyway. That way. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And if you're well ahead and prepared and following the uh, timeline that we put out recently, it means that you'll be ahead of these other competitors as well. Yeah, and that's a really good point with the whole um, focusing on your USPs. Like I said before, the, like the shimmer rings, they look really good on things like Instagram Reels and things like that. So even if you're just doing it to get a bit of awareness out there for your customers, it doesn't mean that, you know, by putting a reel out there, you're hoping to get 100 plus orders of like new customers it could just be that you want to create a bit of sizzle for a product that is coming soon or something like that you can use those things um like cross-platform as well so like send an email with a photo but do a reel of the same product and highlight the same usp and yeah just really making sort of um efficient use of your time as well um this oh this is a good one this kind of comes in to levers actually i so a customer said i don't really want to market christmas products on my main business page can i still profit from selling festive garments absolutely 100 percent, yes um as i said we have a lot of people do this when it comes to levers designs every year um you own heat press two heat presses etc um and you have a brand you have a product um clothing business whatever it is you're sort of trading under um, and you want to make extra profit to fuel your passion project or to fuel your brand, but you don't want them under the same umbrella if you were. There is no reason to say that it has to be the same. You have a heat press, it doesn't matter what brand that product comes from. If it doesn't, It's not like that everyone sees behind the scenes and things like that. So absolutely, yes, you don't have to, as Andy said, you don't have to do Christmas products. If you want to... Tr- give it a try, do it on a separate account, maybe give it a different name. doesn't yeah. have to be the same. Yeah, I mean, if you've got your own uh, web page, so this, and most platforms will let you do this, it's just you can put a different theme onto that page as well. So you can make it have a real different look and feel to it quite easily if, mm-hmm. if you're just doing like, even if it's just something simple, like having a Shopify page, 
just make it look different, use the colors different, perhaps a different font on there. So that means that it's not going to be off-putting to your existing customers, but it's still going to be appealing to the people that want to buy the product. Yeah, because I completely understand where some people come from. Like, for example, if you've got a brand that's very like pastely and um, or maybe like neon or a bit sort of artsy and stuff like that. Yes, there's a way to spin Christmas into that in more of a contemporary way. But sometimes if you've got the formula right, you don't want to mess with it and don't want to put anything sort of different and like new on it, which is yeah. completely understandable. And But also, you know, obviously greens and reds, gold and silver are the biggest colors at Christmas and the big most of the work that we do but there's no reason why Christmas designs can't be in pastel or neon anyway yeah you can always keep your existing brand identity it's just that the slogan or the design is just in the Christmas style but in your in your colors you, you can kind of make your own rules with what you want to make for a Christmas design because you know like I said it's got to be authentic anyway and if it's yeah. not then you shouldn't be doing it that's the beauty of having your own business yeah. you get to make all the rules um what styles are predicted to be popular this year um i mean the the shimmer inks are expected to be very popular they were really popular last year was the first year that they were available on mass um, and we had a lot of interest in them a lot of work was going through um, but admittedly we probably didn't have them available to everyone as early as we mm. could have done so that's why we're bringing these out a lot earlier this year so that we know and we've had people asking and phoning up quite a lot already because they're ready to start prototyping the work so i expect that one to be particularly big um especially around christmas but i think a lot, a lot of slogan stuff will always be big but i think it, it's kind of this full color um work that we're still seeing going through a lot of the stuff that's come through for christmas already is ultra color it's full color it's lots of gradients and tones because there's no limits on the designs anymore so people are going really wild for it already. Yeah. I think as well the funny slogans that are specific to a certain interest or hobby were, they were big this uh, last year, sorry, but I think they're going to be bigger this year because not only is it a funny slogan jumper sweatshirt, it also creates good content for everyone. So things like I was talking about the gym products, there were a few funny ones for that. There were some that were like baking, um, family relationship. There were so many different options last year. Um, so I think yeah, the sort of comical slogans are going to be quite big this year, along with, like you say, the full colour side of things. So one of the other things that will be big this year that was particularly big last year um, is the message around sustainability. And this is something that you should be tending on to your customers because one of the big things around Christmas jumpers was previous probably to last year and the year before, everything was very disposable. Mm -hmm. So that if you bought a Christmas jump, you might buy it for December and then you might throw it in a bin or give it to a closed bank because you're kind of done with it at that point. But customers are looking for a sustainable, long-lasting product. They not, don't want like a cheap polyester Christmas jumper. They want a nice premium, like a Bella Canvas or something like a nice, well-built Christmas jumper with a high-quality design. Because we mentioned earlier, you could probably get away with um, wearing this Christmas jumper. If you only wear it six times a year, you could wear it for 10 years because these transfers are last. I see no reason why the um, jumpers can't if you vacuum pack them. So that would be something I would be a great way of differentiating yourself from your uh, competitors as well mm -hmm. is by talking about the sustainable message, how this is a premium level Christmas item. Uh, I think you'll find there's a, a real win there. One of the other things I wanted to talk about as well, which we expect to be very big, and this is something that we saw a lot of last year and I expect to be even bigger this year. So this is one for if you're one of our Levers customers, this is you really need to be paying attention now because what we found was there's a lot of Christmas school jumpers and I expect this to be very big because it's essentially it's a way of providing a Christmas option to your school customers mm -hmm. where there's a kind of like an everyone win scenario so obviously once it kicks into December mm -hmm. or even November December everyone wants to wear a Christmas jumper but you don't necessarily want to kind of let kids schools don't want to let kids wear anything they want to like, no, they want to be on brand still. It could be Wild West. I mean, they might get away with it a little bit this year, but generally speaking, they want to have control over it. Um, so one, a great way of doing this is actually going to your customers that you might normally do levers designs for, and you can say you do, that you're kind of waiting till all that sort of February, March for your, your jobs to kick in, is actually go to them and say, look, let's work together on providing a school Christmas jumper. Mm -hmm. So you can do it at a very low cost. Transfers are not very expensive. You can get a good quality jumper, the same one, even the same hoodies you use for levers, who knows. 
but you can create a Christmas design. It could just be as simple as like Christmas lettering with a bit of Christmas pattern that just says whatever it's called, target transfers, school or high school, whatever it may be, in the school colours, really nice and simple. And it's an option that you can provide for people so they can buy a inexpensive Christmas jumper, but it's still kind of in line with school uniform. You're going to make um, an extra level, extra income stream that you normally have to wait for for your leavers designs. And it's a really easy win. You can gang those sheets up, get some really great uh, economies of scale, um, and, and it's an easy print. Get them probably A4, A5 size. Um, one press and you're one done. One press, you're done. Um, and that's something you can use our shimmer inks for that as well, and they look phenomenal. Yeah. No, that is a very good point. I think that's definitely going to be something that grows year on year as well. I think it's uh, we're going to see a lot of adoption of it this year. Yeah. Um, we've had some customers ask about the technicalities of that already. So if that's something you are interested in uh learning a bit more about or you just have some questions on how it could work or how to approach schools etc um feel free to drop us a dm or a phone call and we'll happily talk that through with you yeah but we'll do a special event on that a live event in the coming weeks as well so oh, keep an eye out for that <laughs> um Cool. So that leads us on to our last point, uh, which isn't a question. This is just something I wanted to mention to everyone before we wrapped for the day. Um, once obviously everything Christmas related has finished, whether that's early December, mid December, whenever, there will be a lull for heat printers, regardless of what you print. Everyone over Christmas has a couple of weeks off, even we let our printers go home for a week or two <laughs> just to give them a bit of a break. So um, there is going to be a period where you're at home, you're with your friends, your family, eating, drinking, but there's always a bit of time where you think oh, I'm a bit bored. It's nice to switch off, but there's always a few hours of a day that you sort of think, oh, I could, you know, use something to do. Make sure you're maximising the time that you get in December to think through the next six to 12 months of your business because once things hit January, February and things ramp up again, you're going to be limited to time and brain power is the biggest thing as to where you want to take your business. And I think it's really good to have that time to sit down, reflect, plan and sort of think about where your successes have been, where you could have improved, what you want to do next year, things that you want to change. Um, and just have that time to sort of think through a little mini business plan almost and make the most of your downtime as such if your business quiets down. Yeah, I think that's a great point. There's a lot of stuff that we found with our customers, sort of, especially in uh, June, July this year, where certain events have come back for the first time in a couple of years. Music festivals are back on. Mm -hmm. um, but next year there'll be even more stuff that's come back for the first time in a few years. So opportunities that you might have had in years past will come back around so being prepared and factoring them into your workflow and being prepared throughout the year for certain points is a great way to make the most of 2023 that way yeah brilliant well that's everything that we wanted to talk about today i hope we've answered all of your questions related to christmas for heat printers if there's anything we haven't covered that you want to talk through drop a comment below and we'll get back to you um if you are interested in our shimmer rings or anything to do with christmas you can head to custom.targettransfers.com and in the menu there is a christmas page in there with everything you need to know um as andy said we'll be doing lots of live events over the coming months uh, to help you out around christmas um, I think that's everything to wrap up from. Yeah, Did I, I mention so. Banner yeah, Canvas event while we're here? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, so you, most of you have probably already seen, uh, but we are teaming up with Bella Canvas uh, to launch, it's very exciting, their 2023 new colours for their apparel. Um, so if you want to be the first to know what brand new colours are going to be available for 2023. Make sure you sign up for the event. It's free. All we ask is that you pre-book so that we know how many of you are coming. Um, and it's on the 19th. Yeah, nine, Wednesday, Nine's, the 19th. Wednesday the 19th of October nearly said the wrong day um, and there will be a afternoon and evening session as well so if you want to come in the afternoon and have your evening to yourself that's fine if you're a side hustler and you have to work in the day come along after work we're covering all bases on that front so that nobody misses out um, but there are limited spaces so we're hosting it here at the Innovation Centre um, and yeah there are sort of limited numbers on the ticket so if you do want to come make sure to book in now we've already had we're probably a, about a half big, full already yeah so we've had really a big important to uptake on it yeah so make sure if you want to come you book your tickets now um i'll include a link in the description for that um yeah i think that was everything yeah and we'll be doing a design masterclass 
hands-on oh, yes, at are. the event as well. So if you've never used Bella Canvas before, it's a fantastic premium product and we're going to show you how to get the best results from it. So if you think about offering a premium product or um, you already offer a premium product and you want to know how to do it better, then we're going to have some really great options for you on a day and then we might be a couple other surprise guests along too. Yes, and of course there'll be a and a section so you can ask uh, our special guests anything you want on the panel. Um, yeah, just to really get into things for Christmas so uh, for 2023 sorry I'm in Christmas mindset now I need to snap out of it um thanks for listening everyone and we'll be back next week with another podcast episode don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next Thursday